Coming into number 10, we have the Bumble Tumble. A lot of people are afraid of dating because they think that the guy or the girl will dislike them, and also dating can be expensive. Well, with that in mind, this poor girl's Bumble date was so awful, it probably put her off dating for the rest of her life. So, 28 year old Ryan Miller had a date in Huntington Beach, California in September 2018, very recently. She met a guy and she thought that, you know what, she's just gonna have a drink, they're gonna get to know each other. She sipped on one beer and her date, a 38 year old named Brandon, drank three beers and ordered a steak. Fine. She wasn't really enjoying the date though, and at one point Brandon even asked if he was behaving like an a-hole, to which she sheepishly agreed that he was. He was being rude to the server, he was just rude. I get it, you're hungry, but do you need to order a steak or your date's just sipping on one drink? I don't know. Anyway, he got up to use the washroom and she pulled out her phone to text her friends. Soon though, she got a text from him that read, Thanks for dinner, hard no, welcome to Cali, fatty. She replied saying, Are you serious? It turns out that actually he was. He'd left her with the check. What a real, real a hole. Okay, we have some real horror from here on out. Coming in at number nine, we have 65,000 texts for her soulmate. Do you know, I'm not even sure if I believe in soulmates these days, and this stresses me out. You meet a guy or a gal on Tinder, and the worst you expect is a bad date. The best, well, that's open to interpretation depending on what you're after, but hopefully, another date or a series of good dates. You would hope that if the chemistry isn't felt, you can both just be respectful about that, but apparently not. In May 2018, Jacqueline Addis of Arizona was arrested for stalking and harassing a man she met online. The 31 year old met the man on a dating website and soon started visiting his home and flooding his inbox with tens of thousands of texts. She claimed he was her soulmate. I love him. L equals 3.3 .3 times E equals MC squared and that's, that's the equation of eternal love. When the messages started getting threatening, he called the police. One of the messages read, Oh, what I would do with your blood, I want to bathe in it. When you're finding love, not everything is perfect. She was eventually arrested when she broke into his home and was found taking a bath in his tub. When questioned by police, she told them she was his wife. Coming into number two, we have the trap. Friends of Johnny Altinger were initially concerned about his blind date ahead of the Thanksgiving long weekend in 2008. Why? Well, the woman wouldn't give him a proper address to meet him at, instead instructing him to meet him at a back alley garage in a quiet part of Edmonton. Soon his friends were worried when he didn't show up for Thanksgiving plans. Soon they got an email, purportedly from Johnny, that read, I've met an extraordinary woman named Jen, who has offered to take me on a nice long tropical vacation. We'll be staying at her winter home in Costa Rica. Phone number to follow soon. See you guys around for the holidays. Johnny. His friends were suspicious as the email wasn't in his tone at all. Over the next week, his friends became even more concerned, so they broke into his home, where they found his passport was very much still there. This is when Johnny's boss got an email saying he was quitting. Enough was enough, and the police were called to investigate. It turns out that Johnny was lured by an amateur filmmaker who was not a woman at all, but a man named Mark Twitchell. Twitchell has written a script about a married man who uses the internet to meet a woman, but when he goes to meet her, he's attacked by a masked killer. Police believe that this is what happened to Johnny, and when his remains were discovered, unfortunately this was confirmed. Police also discovered that Twitchell had used the Plenty of Fish dating website to try and attack another man who luckily escaped with his life. Okay, this has been far too intense, so I just really want to end on something scary but funny because sometimes the two do come together. This is one of the scariest online dating stories I've ever heard, but honestly, just one of my favourite stories ever. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the Tinder poo story. Okay, this would be terrifying if it happened to you. Luckily, all involved seem to have a good sense of humour. So I just want to paint the picture for you. Imagine this. You've got a date. You're excited. You end up meeting the person. You hit it off. You go back to their house and you talk even more. And, you know, whatever. Like, nature calls and you already have to face the fear of pooping in a new place, which, for me, ah, anxiety. But you know what? You get over it. It's just going to be a blip in your evening. you got to do your business. You've done it. 
it, you're flushing, you're getting ready to go back out to your awesome date. At this point the worst thing on your mind is that maybe they'll smell it and you aren't ready for that kind of intimacy. But oh no, it isn't flushing. You try again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and the maddening fear takes over and you know you just can't leave it there for your date to see and smell, so you pluck it out of the toilet and wrap it in a tissue and you plan on throwing it away, only you realise there's no bin. Then you spot the window. Could you? Should you? What other choice do you really have right now when your poo is in your hand? You've already taken a really long time and you need to get rid of the poo and you're now very, very, very much aware that it's, you know, still in your hand. You open the window and you throw it out, kind of disgusted with yourself, but what were you to do? At least it's over. You're washing your hands, you're breathing a sigh of uneasy relief, but then you look out of the window and oh, holy no, there is the poo caught between two panes of glass. What do you do? Panic, panic. Well, this was the real situation that Christine Lampard found herself in after a date with Liam Smith. She did well, probably one of the bravest things in the history of bravery and went to tell him what happened. She explained the whole thing, how it wouldn't flush and how she threw her poo out the window. He went to investigate and, well, there was the poo stuck in a weird twilight zone of double glazing windows. Liam provided pictures to illustrate the story. It's a weird double glazing situation. The pair were going to try and rescue the poo, agreeing that it couldn't just sit there. This was when Christine had the idea to climb out of the window and try and grab it, bring it back in and maybe toss it in the bin in his garden. Unfortunately though, she got stuck. She got stuck face down out of a window reaching for her own poo and the fire brigade had to be called. They then came and rescued her but they had to remove the window which cost £300 to be replaced. Plus the awkward story of why she was hanging out of the window in the first place. Honestly, I can't tell you how glad I am that this wasn't me. I'd be terrified. This is the funniest slash worst thing that could happen on a date ever and hats off to the pair of them. I hope they get married and tell this story forever. Coming into number 10, we have socks. What could be scarier than socks, right? 17 people shared their online dating horror stories on the website Thought Catalog, and one woman messaged in about her experience with a man on the dating site OkCupid. Now, this is a free to use dating site, and maybe you get what you pay for. She said that she matched with a guy, the conversation got going, and he messaged her to ask if she could wear some socks. He wanted to send her some. Thoughtful? Maybe. No, it actually turns out it's just really, really, really creepy. The guy asked if the woman could wear the socks for two to three months without washing them and then send them back. Like, if you're into feet, I don't necessarily judge you like you do you, but a smelly sock. Honestly, the way a sock smells at the end of the day, let alone at the end of the month or the end of three months, honey, no. The girl never met up with the guy in question, but can you, like, even imagine if they did meet. We have the dog thief. A man used Tinder to match with a woman in Bergen County, New Jersey. An 18 year old girl matched with a guy who showed up to meet her as she was house sitting for a friend. The teen had never met the man who turned up to meet her with a friend of his in tow. It seemed that the second man was a surprise to the girl, but she hung out with her date anyway. Meanwhile, his friend cased the house, stole a laptop, an Amazon parcel, but worst of all, they also stole the family family's beloved two-year-old Maltese dog, Maggie. Mate, you've gone too far. It seems that the date was part of a wider ruse to burgle a number of homes and dupe vulnerable women. Luckily, Maggie was later found by local town residents. Now, this horror story does have a happy ending, but it could be much worse, like the rest of the stories on this list. <sighs> Alright, next up at number six, we got OK Cupid Machete Man. Seeing someone's place for the first time can be an exciting thing. Things are going well and the two of you are finally ready to get intimate. But a person's home tells a lot about them. Are they clean? Do they take care of themselves? Do they take out the garbage? Do they have a machete collection? A woman named Sophie downloaded OkCupid and didn't have much luck meeting anyone interesting. Until one day, she started talking to a man who she then started dating. The two of them went on several dates and one thing led to another and he asked her if she would like to see his place. She agreed. But when she went back to her date's place, the walls were full of swords, knives and machetes. Her date then took a machete off the wall and held it to her throat to show her just how strong and sharp it was. It's like, okay, you're collecting knives. That's not that strange. Lots of people are into weaponry, but holding one to your throat the first time you go to a guy's place, uh, 
Uh uh. I would be afraid to walk out alive. Also, like, was she supposed to be impressed by the sharpness of his knife? Maybe the guy was a serial killer, who knows? It's safe to say that Sophie never saw her date again. General rule for a first date keep all pointy things away from me. All of them. Thank you. Coming into number five, we have the honey trap. This Tinder date also turned out to be a trap. Now, in January 2016, a man in Boulder, Colorado was excited to match with a woman. He was pretty pumped for their date. I mean, I guess you would be, right? As the man arrived at the agreed date location near the University of Colorado in downtown Boulder, Unfortunately, instead of meeting the woman that he'd matched with, he was set upon by a man wearing a ski mask. This is never good news. The man then pulled out a gun and demanded that his date empty his pockets. The perpetrator, who is described as being between 18 and 25 and Hispanic in ethnicity, stole the Tinder date's wallet, including his cash, his cell phone, and his car keys. Now, if there is a silver lining, if there is one being honey trapped by a man, luckily the guy's car was safe. Now it does seem like this was not the first crime like this in the area. Just days before, a woman was robbed after organizing a meetup with a guy on Craigslist. All right, coming into number four, we've got Joyride. But this ride was definitely not joyful. A woman met a guy online and they arranged a movie date. We'll call this couple Greg and Mary. Greg and Mary ordered a pizza and started to watch the first movie. He then turned to her and said, It's hard to be a rich man because women are. Mary said she was uncomfortable, so he apologized and they kept watching the movie. Five minutes later, Greg started ranting again about the same things. Mary told him that she wanted to go home, so Greg offered to drive her. So she gets in his car and then he begins driving recklessly before she can get her seatbelt on. He hits a cement pillar and the car starts to smoke, but he keeps going. Mary is thrashed around the car, she hits the door, the windshield, and describes the experience as being like a bean in a tin can. Greg then starts saying crazy things like, oh I'll get you home but I don't know what condition you'll be in when you get there. <laughs> oh God. Meanwhile, Mary still doesn't have her seatbelt on. Then thankfully, someone pulls in front of Greg's car and he slams on the brakes. Mary hits the windshield, then somehow manages to grab the door handle, opens it and propels herself out of the car as Greg slams on the gas. She hits the pavement, got up and started running as fast as she could. Mary finds a parking lot and hides behind cars until Greg drives away. Unfortunately for Mary, she forgot her purse in Greg's car. She had no money and she was stranded. She calls her roommate, but her roommate doesn't pick up the phone. Mary walks a few miles and ends up flagging a cab. She convinces the cab driver to drive her to her mom's house and that she would pay him when she got there. I don't know about you guys, but like, this one made me scared to get in a car with a date. <laughs> Maybe I'll insist on an Uber next time. Okay, but I'm glad it ended that way because I seriously thought that you were gonna say that she had to call Greg and get her purse back, which like, stay away from Greg. Get out of here, Greg. You creep. Mm -hmm.